couple new songs to add to your five. I got four today, okay? Four. Four. A lot of them came from that wedding. They were, uh, you know, they were uh, they were a dialed in couple, you know what I mean? And uh, so because it was such a hip hop crowd and they really like vibed to hip hop and all that, I was able to try out some different things that really worked and uh, some stuff I also played in the past, you know, and uh, these are these are surefire bangers, right? So new music people. And by the way, we do this every week, right? Every Tuesday at 12 o'clock. Uh, I, I do this show live and, um, you know, if, if I find new bangers or, you know, rediscover a new banger, I'm going to let you guys know about it. First one is Lifetime by the Biebs. Now, Justin Bieber, man, J- Justin Bieber, look at him. Justin Bieber's evolving. He's like the Beatles. He's like Drake. These artists that like, you know, when, if you listen to the Beatles first album and then you listen to their last album you wouldn't think it's the same band, you know? They evolved. And that is that is the key to longevity as an artist, in my opinion. I mean, I'm not an artist, but, like, for me, like, you know, anybody who just, like, stayed, did the same shit, they always fizzled out, you know what I mean? They had their hits, and then they just fizzled out. Like, Bieber went from baby with Ludacris. Now, this new album has so many bangers, and this Lifetime song, this is a great slow song, and I'm getting more and more requests for it, and it really is a great slow song. Like, I don't know if it's the next Thinking Out Loud or whatever, but... It's a great slow song. You're gonna if you play this to a young crowd, they're gonna know it. They're gonna vibe to it. The older people get up because it's a perfect vibe. It's that slow vibe or whatever, you know. And it, it, it just it, you're gonna look dialed in, you know. It's just like it's a sleeper right now. I think it's gonna get bigger though. I think it's gonna get a lot bigger. It really is a great song. His whole album is great. Like he he really evolved. Like shouts to Bieber, man. I mean I don't know. I used to like I, I used to joke saying like, hey, you know, uh, you can request anything except for Bieber. <laughs> When he came out, you know, like back in like the early, like 2010, 2009, like anything but Bieber, Bieber sucks. But man, he grew up. Shouts to him. And speaking about slow dances, another one I've been getting a ton of requests for. Like, let me know, like in the chat, if you guys are getting requests for this. But uh, simply the best, Noah Reed, right? So this is an acoustic cover um, by, um, from like Tina Turner, the the best. It's called, the song's called The Best. Yeah, simply the best, whatever, right? Acoustic cover. It's from Schitt's Creek. I don't know Shit's Creek. I don't even know what that is. All I know is in the last month or two, I've probably had, it's come up in like, I don't know, eight conversations, 10 conversations with couples, all different couples saying, oh yeah, you got to play this song or it's their first dance song. Or I had one couple say they wanted to end with it. Uh, actually at that, uh, at the Lorita Winery uh, wedding, we ended with it. And another cool idea you can do with this, by the way. So um, I have a cue on the second chorus of this song, right? So, cause it's really chill. It is a nice song, right? I have a cue on the second chorus where he says, simply the best, right? He's like, simply the best, better than all the rest, right? Right? It's super like folky and like acoustic. I have a cue right on simply the best. And what I did was I got Tina Turner, the best on the other side, right? And Tina Turner, the best, it's like a snare. It's like, you're simply the best. And that's how like the chorus starts with that. So I cued it up right at the snare. I took the cue and I was like, simply the best, simply the best, simply the best, best, best. And echoed it out like that. And then I hit the snare. You're simply the best, right? It went off. It went off. I'm telling you. And I've never done a mix with a slow song. I, I'm i gonna be honest with you. I, I don't do that. I usually just play the slow song till the end and drop a banger. I and mean, it's what we all do, right? I never, but man, it really went off. So, like, that's something I want to start kind of exploring. Like, you know, if you do a slow song, right, you do a slow song at a wedding, it, if it connects with something like that, especially, like, right on the, like, you know, right, right on the ball, like, right on the, uh, right on the, like, hit the nail right on the head, you know, like, something that's literally a cover of that song, you, if you can make it work where you mix in the regular song, like, and, and make it obvious, right? That's why I wanted to, like, cue the simply the best, simply the best, simply the best. Like, I wanted to really make it obvious. So when they, because everyone's going to stop slow dancing and be like, why is that repeating? And then when you hit it, duh, 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 you're simply the best. Then it's just like they're going to know right away. If you play this to the end and then just hit simply the best, half the people won't make the connection, right? Because not everyone's DJs. You got to really make, when you're doing word plays live, especially at weddings when you have such a diverse crowd, you know, that most of them aren't going to be dialed in. Most of them don't go to clubs. When you do word plays and you connect songs like that, you really, really have to make it obvious for people. People will notice what you're doing. People will, wow, that was actually a good idea. That was cool, right? They, you don't have to be a DJ to realize when you do a good word play, that that was cool, but you just have to make it super, super obvious. So that's what I did with this song, and it really did went off. Now, the best I would never play for dancing, but because it was connected to that, 
people bopped and danced and then I moved into real bangers. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can get away with playing a song like that for dancing if it's connected in the right way, if you transition in the right way and, and people keep it moving. Like, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I thought it was great. Try it. Try it. Um, sorry for singing so much today. I feel like I sang a lot today. But anyway, let's get into some dancing music, shall we? Pop that. Went off. Went off. Went off. I have an acapella in. Shout out to DJ Ragoza. Um, go to djragoza.com and get his edits. He has like the greatest edits of all time. I'll put it in the chat right now. djragoza.com. This man has the craziest edits of all time. He like genuinely does. Like it's just, it, not like crazy, but like, I mean, they're just so useful. They're just so useful, right? So just check him out. For weddings, he has so many great edits. But anyway, so he has an acapella in that's just like, pop that, da, da, pop that, ba, da, ba, 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 right? And just doing that. And I mixed it with no hands, right? So I just, the instrumental, the outro of no hands, did the pop that, went to that, it went off. Super hype song. Everyone loved it. Even the parents were dancing to it. So highly recommend that, number one. Um, add that to your list if you don't already have it. Obviously, it's not a new song, but like it's one of those things where it came out. I'm like, eh, I'm not playing this at weddings. It's not going to go off yet, right? It's now mainstream enough and been out long enough where pretty much everybody's heard it. And if you have a younger crowd that's into hip hop, it's going to work. And on for the same exact crowd, if you have a younger crowd that's in hip hop, you know, into hip hop and all that, and hip hop's really working, the next song is Bees in the Trap. Bees in the Trap. Do you remember this song? This came out. 2011? I, I remember playing it at uh, Rowan University at a frat party. So it had to have been like 2011, 2010 when it came out because it was new then. Uh, it, it, it's one of those songs that sounds like shit when it's clean, you know? Because <laughs> like the first lyrics, the, um, the first lyrics are like, bitches ain't, uh, bitches talk shit. Wait. Bitches ain't shit, but I I don't even know the words. But it's just all a hundred motherfuckers. Like it's literally like a lot of curse words right in the beginning. So like the the clean version is just like weird, you know. Like it does like sound like shit. But like the beat is hard, the the verse is hard, and it's just it's just a really it's like a ninety something BPM song that's like newer, you know. And I I mentioned this in other shows in other episodes of like this show. Like I like I want to start replacing all those songs in the 95 to 105 BPM range. You know, you're crazy in loves. You're yeah by ushers. I want to start replacing all them. Hot in here, like, like you know, j jump around. I want to start replacing all them. They're old. They're played out. Everyone plays them, like, you know, so th songs like the motto, songs like Bees in the Trap, you know, things like that I'm trying to mix in now instead of the basic shit uh, to kind of freshen up my sets, you know, for my own sanity because I'm not playing the same thing over and over again. And not for nothing, these couples are only getting younger, okay? They or well, they stay the same age, but the, the when they grow up is only getting, you know, further and further. So, Yeah by Usher came out in 2003, people. 2003 that came out. 2003. I was a freshman in high school. I was a freshman. So, how old were these couples when it came out? They're like 5, right? Like five, four, they, they didn't even, they were still probably shit in their pants every once in a while. You know what I mean? So like, obviously they know Yeah by Usher, but everyone plays it. I'm just trying to get that stuff out. So 